Skeletor better check that nothing's swooping down from the skies. Here's a look at the brand new Mattel Master Universe Origins, Point Dread and Talon Fighter, Mystical Outpost and Flying Vehicle. With the mighty Talon Fighter perched atop its eldritch arch, the mysterious Point Dread traveled through time and space before Sorceress merged it to Castle Greyskull. Well, I can't speak for the Sorceress, but I can tell you the Canada Post sent this just in time. Before, of course, we get a closer look at the brand new Massey Universe Origins Talon Fighter and Point Dread, let's grab the old tape measure and see how long the vehicle is. First in inches, you're looking at it from the end of its thrusters. I'm guessing the thrusters are back here to the front of its beak. Talon Fighter is exactly 11 inches in length, or it's 29 centimeters long. Considering both have parking passes for Castle Grayskull, I'm going to move over the Talon Fighter and bring in the earlier looked at Wind Raider. Now, both of them are actually about the same size of vehicle. Maybe you could give it, if anything, to the Wind Raider be being slightly longer. The Wind Raider also has a slightly longer wingspan as well. But the vehicles work quite well with one another. Just again, the choice is yours as to which one you'd like to have atop of the Castle Grayskull. To help you perch on top of the tower, you actually get yourself a couple of other things that go along with the Talon Fighter. First, you get, of course, the two parts for Point Dread. Point Dread actually has two part component pieces. The actual main piece that you can actually have yourself a Master Universe Origins figure standing inside of. And then, of course, there's a few little things that you can also put on top of that. And then there's also a further part to the tower that just clips in place. Now, if you look at the bottom of this, you'll actually see that there's a circular peg and then that lines up to the, to the hole that's provided and you snap the two together. These bricks will also align with one another rather nicely and you have yourself basically the formation of point dread. The only thing that's then left to do is you actually get this extra wooden piece as well that has these extra pegs. These will be the things that he attaches the talons onto. The hole, of course, on the provided top there just fits then onto the top. And actually, it doesn't fit on top. It actually fits inside. So this little circular peg will actually fit in then inside the hole. And then you got basically the workings of Point Dread. From there, you're going to take yourself then the Talon Fighter. And if you look on the bottom of Talon Fighter, it's basically all just the continuation of the same circular pegs. Then those will plug then on top of this. And then you've got yourself Talon Fighter plugged in place and on top of Point Dread. The thing about it, though, you want to make sure that everything is lined up properly. Like, I didn't have it lined up properly right there. And if that was the case, you'd have, of course, a little more issues with Talon Fighter balancing in place. Then that's what it looks like on top of Point Dread. A nice way, of course, displaying I'll be bringing back in Castle Grey Skull that we looked at in an earlier review. And I'll, of course, show you guys what that looks like on top of the tower. Some assembly, though, was required. I'm just going to take, actually, Talon Fighter off here for a second. We're going to go back to Point Dread more in a moment. Talon Fighter, though, some assembly was required. You probably already saw the amount of things that were inside the box. First of all, the satellite dish is something that's removable. One thing that's really neat, though, is that you can swap this out then with a pair of blasters. And the same thing then can be attached to half of the part of Point Dread. But you had to install the wings. Those were one things that had to be installed. You also had to include or had to install the bottom talon pieces. Does this have talons? It does actually have talons, Napoleon Dynamite. These just slid in place. And actually, while you are sliding these in place, you want to make sure that they're lined up because they actually sit inside of grooves. And if the grooves aren't lined up properly, the talons won't completely snap in place. Um, and then basically the only other thing that was required is just taking your figures and then sitting them inside the canopy. Happy to report already that the stickers were already as, uh, as assembled and already applied. Stickers were applied to the side of the canopy here. Stickers were also applied to the back thrusters. And if you were to open up the canopy, it just involves you getting your finger inside there. And actually, it's even easier sometimes to, there we go, just pop that open with your thumb. On the inside, you've also got some additional sticker applications. Sticker on the front control panel, stickers on the back control console. A few little stickers there also on the side, and you've also got some additional tools on the back there too. That looks like a futuristic nail gun or staple gun. You got yourself, <laughs> so it looks like a fly swatter. Some wrenches, uh, an axe. We've also got ourselves a medical kit and a, and a fire extinguisher. I think the thing that I was finding the most funny was the fact that it actually has itself a little fly swatter. Of course, you can take your figures and sit them inside of that. I'll do that also more in a second. Actually, you know what? We'll do that right now. We'll bring in He-Man. We'll also bring in Tila doesn't have to necessarily be this combination of two characters but if you did want to fit them inside it's a little awkward though when you actually open up the canopy first let's do he-man he-man you'll just bring the legs forward 
bring his arms forward also as well. And then you'll have to get He-Man's legs inside there well enough. Now he doesn't actually, you'll see when you're looking at him, he doesn't sit completely flat. There's a little bit of a gap on the back where his back isn't gonna line up completely to that, but that's more than enough to at least close the canopy. What's strange though, is that if you take any other figure, I find it actually works best with smaller, leaner figures. And you take Tila, gonna bring her legs forward. She literally has to straddle He-Man. Because if you're looking at the figure, I'm just going to like lift this up so you guys can actually see. There's not enough space to have her legs forward. So what they have to be instead is that the legs have to be on either side of He-Man's body. So while holding that, I'll show you guys exactly what I mean. We're going to take Tila. And again, literally, she's just going to straddle the side of He-Man. Now, you may be looking at this and think there's no way at all you're going to be able to close the canopy. Well, you'll see. Closing the canopy, there's plenty enough of actual heads, head space where both He-Man and Tila can sit inside of it. I thought really that looking at it first, the time I was actually putting He-Man in, the very, very first time I was putting He-Man in, I thought there was no way I'd be able to get a secondary figure in there. And I guess you could probably do that with also a male figure too. The thing about it though is that it just doesn't have a lot of leg space on the sides to He-Man. I find like a female figure fits the best. But if you wanted to, let's just grab ourselves. Who do I have? Who do I have? Well, I just recently, in fact, looked at Spike Or. I'm just going to bring Spike Or. I had him in a little baggie for a second here. Take Spike Or. Now, Spike Or is probably not the best example to be using because, of course, he's got himself, you know, he's got himself the little uh, trident there on the side. But if you did want to say take Spike Or, Spike Or fits in there as well. Although the spikes on the top of the head are going to make things a little bit more difficult to close the canopy. So, for all intents and purposes, you could actually have more than one male figure sitting inside the body or sitting inside the cockpit. But I find it actually works better to use a female figure. Now, with He Man, let's just go ahead and remove him for right now. Like the original Talon Fighter, though, let's close up shop here. On the bottom of it, there is a section that you get yourself a little handle. The handle plugs in place. And it snaps in place, and it gives you then the chance to hold the Talon Fighter more like an actual toy, like if you wanted to actually have this thing flying around. It would work the best that way. Unfortunately, though, it means, as you're already putting it down, you'll see right away, the handle then prevents this thing from actually sitting flat. A uh, good thing about it, though, is if you did want to remove the handle, the handle is removable, and the only thing it plugs in place by is this circular peg, and it fits then inside of here. There are no side snaps, no little ledges of plastic. Because I know every time I would be doing that, I would be worrying that that little plastic little clasp would eventually start to snap or buckle. With this only being a circular peg, at least it's going to make things a lot easier. Again, if you want to snap this in place, if again you want to fly around the Talon Fighter for yourself, and then later you just detach it. It's not the easiest, but at least it removes and doesn't damage the plastic, so I like that. The other thing it also comes included with as well is the additional cannon pieces. Now the cannons plug in exactly the same way. So if, for example, you want to take yourself the satellite dish, this just detaches like that. And then you would take yourself the cannons and they would fit instead in place. So if you wanted to give yourself the Talon Fighter a little bit more firepower, you can also accommodate that as well. Now let's go back to Point Dread here. Point Dread, we could just really leave the top on there. This doesn't really have to, to be detached, but let's just detach this part at least. Now this does have clips on the sides. so. My worry still is in place that this will eventually break if I am removing this too frequently. But if we just put that to the side here for, for a second, you can actually then put this on top of Castle Grayskull's tower. And then you can take yourself the satellite, or the cannon for that matter, and this just plugs in place like that. So you got yourself like a little surveillance station on top of the tower of Castle Grayskull. Or if you wanted to, just detach this. I'm going to detach the cannon piece and that's going to clip in the same place. So basically you're going to have yourself a little gun turret now on the top of castle with that properly in place. You can get yourself then a He-Man figure. Now you're probably not going to be having him in a seated position, but let's just extend the legs a little bit. Now you can have He-Man or any one of the masters, for example, perched on top of castle Grayskull. Seat belts I probably would recommend would be the best thing to have if you're going to have a standing character on top of a tower that high. But yeah, you can have yourself like little He-Man with a gun turret. So that, I like certainly the touches of that. Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting set. Now, of course, you guys probably will also want to see what this looks like with Castle Grayskull. I'll uh, bring in the castle for a second. Now, again, you can either have it just as the tower, a little a turntable, a little uh, turret station. Or again, if you wanted to turn into Point Dread, all it's just a case of it's taking the two pieces and attaching them together. Now, again, I wouldn't want to do this too frequently. I think once I've settled on the idea, I might actually more so display it, I think more looking like a point dread than actually looking like a little gun turret or satellite station. I like the actual detailing that they've done to this. Tiny little steps, though. I can't even imagine. Like if you were to say, take He-Man, let's just bring in He-Man here. Look at the size of He-Man's feet. 
look at the size of the, the actual figure. I don't know if there's any way that he'd be able to properly walk up those stairs. There'll be some pretty narrow stairs to get to the top of it. But again, you've got yourself a nice little, uh, little tower station, not only to perch Talon Fighter, but again, if you wanted to put this on top of Castle Grayskull. So bring in Castle Grayskull right now. We're looking actually at the top of the tower here. I have already taken the time of detaching Point Dread, so at least we're only going to be using the top half of it. And when you are lining it up, once again, you're going to take yourself the bricks. And if you're going to line them up right here, you'll see open sections for the top. And those just line up in place, and you can snap Point Dread in place. So now you've got the top of the tower right there with the additional extension of Point Dread. For all intents and purposes as well, I'm just going to detach this. For all intents and purposes, you can also as well take this piece, and this also plugs in place. Although it doesn't plug in place, what it does instead is it sort of sits against the tower. Can you see that right there? I mean, there's the opening back there as well, so you can have yourself your figures uh, perched on the back. And you could also really, you could take the top of, of Point Dread, you could also attach it where we had had it before, and you could also give yourself the full tower. It gives you two options, but again, it doesn't give you the options to have it on this side. So for example, you can't take point dread just because there's not as much width space on this side. You wouldn't be able to have it on this side and then have you know the turret on this side. You have to really choose which, which configuration you want. Whether you, again, want the full point dread or whether you want to just, again, use this section only. And whereas this did clip in place, this you'll already see doesn't, it doesn't actually clip in place. It more slides around. Something I don't think I actually showed you in the review, but that handle that clips on the back of the Talon Fighter, you can still also clip it in place if you're going to always have the vehicle perched on top of Point Dread. It is still something that can be displayed with it, although if you ever decide you want to have the vehicle on its own, that little handle piece will have to then detach because, of course, the Talons then won't sit flat on whatever shelf space you have the figure displayed or have the vehicle displayed. Speaking of figures, also inside right now, I've actually got He-Man and Man-at-Arms, once again, to drive home the idea that you can use two male figures. I prefer myself to actually have Tila or some female figure sitting in the back, but it does have enough accommodating space, although you have to, again, have the figure's legs on the other side, on either side of of whatever figure you have sitting in the front, but the canopy does properly close in place. The only thing that isn't displayed as of right now in the actual wrap up of this review is I don't have a place to actually store the gun turret because of course I've got the vehicle displayed on top of the point dread. There's no actual secondary space to store, like for example, the, the cannons. Now there is actually a hole on the bottom of the Talon fighter. I thought, hey, that would be ideal if I could attach the cannons on the top of the turret or on top, I should say, of the canopy. And then I put the satellite dish in that hole that's provided. but doesn't work. The hole is too small in between the talons of Talon Fighter, so there's just an extra piece I'm not going to have on display for right now. I think, for me at least, when it comes to displaying this, I'm probably only going to use the top of Point Dread and attach that to the top of the tower of, of Castle Grayskull, leaving behind then this little turret station that I might actually just have displayed maybe on the side of Castle Grayskull. I think that might make for a little t small outpost station where the masters could be standing at guard, waiting for the, the soldiers of Skeletor to be invading the castle. All in all, though, it's a neat looking vehicle. I remember having the original uh, Talon Fighter when I was a kid, although much is the, usually the story when it comes to these old Master Universe figures. I picked up Talon Fighter at the time from a, from a garage sale, and I think it was missing a lot of pieces. Some of the stickers had already fallen off, and it was in bad shape, but it was good enough shape, at least for a kid of what? When I was six, seven, maybe even eight years old at the time. I was really into Massey Universe. Loved that toy. Loving what we're getting here from, of course, Mattel. Have you had the chance to pick up the Talon Fighter? Let me know down below in the comment section. And if you have, how do you have the vehicle displayed? On its own? Or do you have it actually perched on top of Castle Grayskull? Of course, when it all comes down to it, it's, it's really just the space that you have. I have enough space for right now, at least to have Talon Fighter displayed on top of Castle Grayskull. That could very well change with the amount of things that we're getting still from Mattel. Of course, if you guys enjoyed this video, why not hit it with a like? If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing, and you certainly would like to stick around for more Massey Universe Origins reviews, if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and you're turning on the bell notification. If you'd also like to go back and check out my earlier reviews, not only of the Castle Grayskull playset, but all the other things I've looked at for Massey Universe Origins popping up at the very end of this video will be as well a playlist you can check out as well. Of course, there's definitely going to be a lot more videos coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Thank you